are in Hamburg, Germany's second largest city, and formerly Europe's foremost commercial seaport, even though it is situated about 60 miles inland from the sea. During the recent World War, over 300,000 buildings, representing more than half of the city's total constructions, were completely destroyed. And although reconstruction has been at an average rate of about 20,000 buildings a year since the war ended, Hamburg, outwardly and inwardly, is still suffering from the ravages of war. The city's location at the confluence of the Elbe and Elster rivers gives it the appearance of a seaport and its many canals remind us of Amsterdam and Venice. Most of the older buildings are supported by gigantic piles driven deep into the soft clay, which cushion the shocks of bombs and thereby save many of the city's ancient landmarks. The spirit of humanity always rises like a phoenix from the ashes of war and begins to build again, each time with the hope that war may have at last vanished from the civilized world. Such is the case in Hamburg, where the people are taking heart again and rebuilding their city with the generous help of former enemies. In the suburbs of Hamburg, we visit the world-famous Hagenbeck Zoo, where the idea of confining animals in settings similar to their native habitats is believed to have originated. Leo has become used to people staring at him, but he can never get used to his next door neighbor, and who could? This strange looking rhino is one of the zoo's star attractions with skin-like armor plate. He is known as the tank of the zoo. All animals, including the lion, fear him, and he fears none. Why should he? Prior to the days of Hagenbeck, wild animals were usually confined in cages or behind heavily barred enclosures, all of which Hagenbeck cleverly eliminated, as illustrated here. Although this moat is too wide for an elephant to jump across it, one occasionally falls into it, and the job of getting him out becomes a major operation. From Hamburg, we journey to Bremen, and we happen to arrive on a quiet Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, this scene would be teeming with activity, as Bremen is the second largest seaport in Germany. Like Hamburg, it is situated on a river, several miles from the sea. In the very heart of Bremen, we are surprised to find an ancient windmill, which forms a picturesque landmark for the city. The old town of Bremen harkens back to the Hanseatic League, when its famous town hall, or Rathaus, was the alpha and the omega of all great movements in medieval Europe. From here departed the German crusaders, who before they left paid their final respects to Roland, whose monument stands here as a symbol of civic pride. And now we say farewell to Roland and continue on to Munich, or München, the capital of Bavaria, founded in 1158. Adjacent to the Frauenkirche, or Cathedral Church, stands the Town Hall, in the tower of which we witness a unique performance of the famous clock carillon. Every morning at 11 o'clock, the performance begins, and it reproduces a medieval celebration in honor of the Crusades, when knighthood was in flower. After the procession ceases, the lower section takes over with a twirling dance. <laughs> Munich has always been noted for its Nymphenburg porcelain, and here are a few excellent examples.
Although this is a tribute to Bacchus and the grape, the most popular beverage in Munich is beer. And it is an interesting sight to see the colorfully adorned brewery horses drawing unique beer trucks through the streets. The same today as it was a hundred years ago. And here we say prosit to Löwenbrau and farewell to Munich. Traveling over the Autobahn to Heidelberg, we are reminded of the excellent roads which connect with the major cities of Germany. And here is old Heidelberg, romantic city of the student prince and Germany's oldest university town. Picturesquely situated on the Neckar River, Heidelberg's setting is naturally romantic. Although today the spirit of the student prince seems to have given way to more practical things, making old Heidelberg, as pictured in song and story, a thing of the past. Nevertheless, the university still stands, and the spirit of a new age is reviving it so fast that it has already become a beacon light of modern thought throughout Europe. Old Heidelberg Castle, overlooking the Neckar River, stands as a monument to a glorious past, as well as a reminder of the fact that time marches on and nothing of a material nature can last forever. A new spirit has come to Western Germany which may in time unite the entire fatherland in the democratic pursuits of peace and prosperity, which are the natural heritages of all mankind. And it is with this thought that we say farewell and good luck to the new Germany.